Okay, here in the third video, what we want to do is actually start um, executing some of the stuff. We're going to basically um, build out those three YAML files we discussed and execute them. Take a little poke around with some cube CTL commands, some cube cuddle commands, and really see how this thing looks at runtime. Okay, let's talk about the fact that the persistent volume has a, exam a YAML file that we're going to actually um, define a persistent volume with. You see that here it says kind persistent volume. And it's available to pods who issue a claim. So it's a nice decoupling. That is, this persistent volume is available here on all pods on this VM host. And so that brings us to the next section here, the actual consumers of this volume. Here we have a pod, as you can see. It has a container, an Nginx container. And we want to basically uh, consume this volume. And we do that by use of a claim. And so we're going to actually um, introduce the third of the YAMLs here to um, be a claim against the persistent volume. And so you see here the three pieces of uh, YAML files working together um, to expose some storage, some physical storage on the VM host. And this is the relationship between all three of them. And so basically the pod has a volume that is attached to a claim. And the claim is around three gigabytes. Now, as mentioned before, this is really the diagram we ought to be thinking about. Um, this is what all those YAML files are attempting to represent, whereby we have a network administrator really um, sharing the storage through a storage pool for which the developer lays a persistent volume claim against, allowing his pod, his applications inside the pod, to access this shared storage infrastructure. In our case, we're kind of cheating. We're putting everything directly on the VM host. Um, again, we're doing this just for demo purposes to really demonstrate how these YAML files work. But always keep in mind, really, this is the way it ought to be uh, working. Here you can see the actual um, GitHub repo, K8S vols, where I have the source code, the volume, the persistent volume, the pers persistent volume claim, and then the pod itself, which consumes the storage. So this is all here for your review. I, I recommend you go through line by line and kind of understand the basic syntax here. And it is quite basic. So let's start here with the um, persistent volume itself first. You'll see here that I'm just creating these three files from scratch. The first one, of course, is persistent volume. You'll notice the kind says persistent volume there at the top. And then some of the other um, capacities like 10 gigabytes, etc. Again, recommend you go there. Let's go do the second one here. And this is the actual claim against that storage. And this is basically saying um, I want 3 gigabytes out of that 10 gigabytes of storage. The kind is persistent volume claim. And so here you can see um, the different parameters here that make up. Um, it's requesting 3 gigabytes. And finally, the third YAML file here, this is the pod itself. This will define a volume that the um, Nginx um, container is going to use. And so you'll see the different sections here. And we kind of talked about the relationship. We've got all three now. The next step is to actually go and do a cube cuddle create command to actually put these um, basic um, YAML files into use. Okay, notice we've got all three YAML files complete now. Let's go ahead and issue the cube cuddle command against the, um, the volume first. So dash F, and then we'll go ahead and do that one. And then, of course, the claim is next here. So we'll just go up arrow and just fill in claim here as the next actual um, file. And that should succeed. And then finally, the pod. And that really ties the three pieces together here that make up the different components for the shared volume for my Nginx container. So we'll do a couple quick commands here. Let's go ahead and do the first one to check the volume. And that's a cube cuddle command get PV for persistent volume. And then we'll say task PV volume. As you recall, that was the name of our persistent volume. And it's here. Let's now take a look at the um, command itself, the claim rather. So cube cuddle get PVC, the persistent volume claim. And that's the test PV um, claim name that we need to um, look up here. Let's see if that's in place. It is. And then finally, the third one here is the pod itself. So that's another cube cuddle command here. Um, get pod task PV dash pod. And it looks like all three pieces are in place. Later, we'll add in a service so we can come in 
you know, from the outside. But for the moment, I think the next step, what we want to do is curl in to the agent once we remote into one of the two agents where this is all. Now, one of the things we want to do next is figure out where that pod is running, which agent, because that's the one that we want to remote into and experiment with nginx. So let's go see if we can issue that command you just saw here, which is essentially describe um, the pod. And that should tell you which agent's running on. And it looks like it's running on agent zero over here. So if we basically say cube ctl get nodes, you'll see that there is, in fact, a node zero. We talked about how we would remote into that earlier in this discussion. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's remote in and see from there inside of that um, running agent if we can essentially and rather more than just a running agent we're going to go into the container running in that image and do the curl command we haven't yet exposed the IP address of that running pod of that running container so we're just going to remote directly into it but first let's figure out let's review back how we would SSH into that essentially two steps one going um, to the master and then to agent zero there as you see it. But let's do that next. We've already copied the SSH key, so we don't need to do that again. Now it turns out we can just go directly to the pod without worrying about which host it's on. This will bring it to the right host. So we'll do the kubectl exec command, interactively connect into a bash folder here. We're in here as root. So I would say the next thing we want to do is do an apt get update. So apt get update, make sure we have the latest binaries here to do the install of curl, because after all, from within here, um, we want to do a curl command against localhost to see that index page. And that's the, really the whole point um, of this whole exercise. So let's go ahead and install the curl package. It should be pretty quick here. Okay, that's complete now. Let's just basically clear the screen and finally from within this pod do the curl command and actually see um, what's going on here. Let's make sure um, curl is installed appropriately. We'll just do curl dash dash help to make sure it's in there. It is. So now let's just do curl localhost. And everything looks like it's working. Hello from Kubernetes storage. This has been successful. So Nginx has successfully um, leveraged that persistent volume of shared storage. So any pod actually running on both our agents has access to its local persistent storage. We notice that we create a pod and using a claim we can get to that storage. And so this exercise is just about complete. Let's do a quick review. So this kind of wraps up this module. Um, one of the last things we'll probably do in the next section a quick video on how I would expose this pod as a service so that from the outside world we can get the same hello world. Again, just to review, we use a number of YAML files to leverage this persistent volume, this storage here, where we put an index.html file allowing our container, our Nginx container, to access the shared storage and actually show hello world. Now, we could have a number of pods all sharing this sh storage here. And really that's the point here is to show how persistent volumes, pods, and persistent volume claims can be used together to leverage shared storage on a VM host.